So I, I was thinking to order things as follows, and hopefully this will make sense. Uh, first, to uh, to go through the snapshot tests article, I think it offers a nice overview that really um, motivates uh, motivates the problem, and then mentions I think most, maybe not all, but most most of the functions that we'll look at in greater detail, and gives a sense of what what they do and how uh, how they come in in a typical kind of testing testing workflow, and then from there uh, shift to looking at those those individual functions. Uh, uh, involved with snapshot tests a little bit more closely. And then uh, after that, looking, going to uh, states. Uh, okay. Um, so to kind of motivate this, uh, this may not be a full motivation, but this is at least how I've internalized it. You know, uh, up to this point, I think we've been looking at um, expectations and tests that look at what um, like simple things that uh, a function emits. Uh, you know, let's say the function returns a true or a false, or it returns an R object, uh, and you know we're looking to see if it's equal to something. Uh, uh, you know, equal and all all order is the same, um, uh, whether it's true, false, etc. Um, but it may be that a function will will emit something more complicated. Um, maybe. Uh, you know, thinking about HTML tools or uh, or, or shiny, may, maybe it, you know it emits uh, a string that's that's some HTML code. Um, um, that well, well, we'll come to why that's maybe more complicated in a moment. Um, or or it emit or uh, the, the the function creates an image. Um, let's say ggplot creates an image, um, or it has some other you know create some other thing whose um, value we need to inspect somehow and, and, and kind of compare against a benchmark. Um, so that's basically why snapshot tests exist. So we haven't seen tools to do that. And now, now we will. Um, the overall workflow for, for this is, or actually maybe this is even still part of motivation. Uh, so you, you may be thinking it's like, well, HTML is nothing more than just character strings. Um, but if you wanted to create a function like this, bullets, for example, uh, that simply constructs constructs this this ht this HTML um, code, um, you know, it seems like the at first blush, it seems like the the output of this function is pretty simple, and you could imagine testing it uh, just using some string functions, perhaps. But the problem arises is that you, uh, in doing that within test that, you need to escape lots of things uh, uh, and, and add certain other symbols that could rapidly make even this very simple example unreadable, uh, uh, or rather the tests themselves unreadable. Uh, so for example, here you see that you've got the unordered list and a carriage return. The carriage return doesn't exist here. Uh, I mean, at least in terms of the, the characters that you can kind of see printed on the screen, but it does exist. And so you need to put it in. Uh, there are differences around how Windows and uh, Windows and Linux slash Mac handle this. Uh, and then uh, for, for other, other elements, uh, maybe you need to do some escaping. So for strings, if you wanted to uh, produce this right here with ID equals you know uh, quote, open quote X close quote, uh, you need to do some escaping uh, in order for test that to understand what you what you mean. So even this for this simple case where we're just the, the function kind of emits a string, like a regular character string. Um, if we're using the tools that we've seen to date, just looking at something equals you know a character string equals something, uh, then then that 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 can become hard. It's doable, but it, it can become become hard. Uh, lucky for us, there's a better way. <laughs> that way is with snapshot testing. Um, so a snapshot testing, um, you can you can basically take a, a snap. The snapshot will capture uh, several things at once. So it'll capture the uh, it'll capture the code that gets printed to the console, uh, or so basically what the function emits, as well as any uh, as well as any so the output, let's say, as well as any. Um, uh, Kind of conditions of the code. So if there are uh, warning messages or error messages that are issued along the way, those will also be, be captured. Um, uh, so if we simply use this function uh, uh, expect snapshot, um, then we can we can 
on the first run, uh, this is back with our bullets example where we're trying again uh, to produce this simple HTML script. Uh, what we can do is we can set up our test uh, called bullets uh, and have our two sets of expectations that uh, the two tests, the two unit tests that are within this, um, uh, where we're, we're looking to see you know, bullets around A and bullets around A, B. Um, and uh, then we'll run the code. Uh, and if it's the first, if it's the first time this uh, the snapshot uh, is taken, uh, a file will be written to uh, to disk that that will that will capture this in a really kind of a helpful way, uh, in a formatted way where we'll first see, as you can see, uh, uh, the code that is run, right, um, as well as the the output, um, and then this in the same file you'll have these two these two unit tests. Uh, and what's interesting here is we're, we're seeing we're seeing things as they're printed to the console without having all these escape characters and whatnot. So immediately this becomes human readable. It's machine both machine readable, which is maybe more trivial, but but also importantly human human readable. Um, and then you know as I was saying, when this is run, uh, these snapshots will be saved to a, one of your test folders. So this is kind of nice, like a, you know test test that. There'll be a folder underscore snaps that'll contain a markdown file, uh, at least for this simple case, a markdown file um, uh, whose, whose, whose name corresponds to kind of the name of the test block right here. So if we're looking at this bullets, we would have bullets.md uh, that, that are in the snaps. Uh, so these are the snapshots that, that, are, that are created when the test is run. Um, um, and then once, if the test is run again, so again, we're coming back to our bullets example, uh, simply, uh, you know, the test that will look into your, into your snaps, into your snapshots, uh, and it'll compare uh, what, uh, the, it'll, it'll compare the, the prior state of the snapshot with the current state of the snapshot. So prior meaning like when you first ran the test, it created this markdown file. Current state is when it's run again, it's going to create um, it's going to create basically a new a new markdown file, and, and then it's going to compare. It's going to compare the two, uh, and if there are any deviations, uh, any differences between the two, uh, then you'll you'll be alerted to those deviations. At least um, in this case so far, for for text, uh, for simple text. Um, so if there are if there are deviations, like here, here for example, uh, the in, in the in the in the text of this article, they're changing they're changing the way that. Uh, the the bullets are generated, uh, and so it's kind of out denting or like removing the indentation of this this inner element, this this list element, uh, and so uh, now now the same function produces a different a different output whose uh, appearance you know we can see here and where we can see the old versus the new, again in kind of human readable format, um, and likewise for for the other example, um, and if I guess there are kind of two cases here, right? So, so now, so far, we've had a snapshot from the previous state, a snapshot for the current state, and there may be differences. Uh, and then it's left to it's left to us, I guess, as package authors, to determine whether whether that is an acceptable deviation or not. Uh, and so, except that has uh, a couple functions: uh, uh, snapshot accept. Uh, and I think it's snapshot reject. Well, that's what I'm saying here. So basically, if you want to accept this change, like let's say this this change represents an improvement in the way your function works, uh, you know, an alignment with the way you think it should work. And so, for future testing, you want uh, you want this new state to be the reference the reference point for any future tests. Uh, so, in which case, you can simply uh, accept this this new snapshot as the the reference snapshot. Uh, uh, that will be the snapshot against which uh, all future future states are, are compared. Um, right. Um, and, and so usefully kind of the snapshot snapshot file format you know, is really nice. It makes it quite human readable. I, I, I didn't run this on my own for, for lack of time, but uh, uh, it, at least as the article presents it, it looks really nice and human readable that you, you'll have uh, this markdown to the file with with a you know um, an h1 heading that'll correspond to the name of the the test block uh, and then you'll have uh, the output uh, uh, output of like each each unit test that appears within that that test block so here we were looking to produce these these uh, uh, unordered unordered lists uh, you know with without an ID and with an ID in this case 
Uh, and, and this is really nice. You can open this markdown file, quickly inspect it as a human uh, and see whether it's sensible, right? Um, um, the other thing I, I think I mentioned is, as well as one thing that's nice about the snapshots uh, with this expect, expect snapshot function uh, is, is that if, if, your, if your function um, emits any messages or warnings or kind of has any changes in condition, those will also be presented within, within the output. So here, they have the simple uh, illustrative function uh, where you, you're printing hello to the console, uh, printing hi is a message and issuing a warning saying, how are you, right? Uh, so all of these things uh, uh, will be captured within the snapshot itself, as you can see below. So if we were to subject this, this function f uh, to, to uh, the kind of snapshot testing, uh, we'd say it expects a snapshot, uh, and then we would, we would see that uh, indeed, if we've got, this is the code, this is the output, so what was printed to the console. Uh, so I'll make this a little larger. I'm recognizing belatedly that it's, it's a little small for all but me. Um, uh, and, and then you'll see here a message uh, and, and a warning. Uh, now you'll notice that we've, we've talked about messages and warnings so far, not yet errors, uh, but, but fret not, uh, snapshot, uh, snapshot testing has you, has you covered. Um, so indeed, if, if, your, if your code throws an error, that can, become, that can be problematic in the sense that uh, you know, this, this, the, the test will fail. Right, because it issues an error, and, and um, um, that may or may not be what what you want. Uh, and instead, you may want to kind of expect that there there is there is an error, um, uh, and, and have the tests run. In which case, you have this one argument: uh, error equals true, uh, which will basically say that you anticipate that this code will uh, you, basically your your function will issue an error. Um, and, and that's okay, that's what you expect. And uh, you, you'll just uh, expect it to, uh, uh, you'll let your, your, your uh, kind of test code continue uh, and then you know, capture, capture this error basically. Um, uh, so in that way, your test, your test won't fail uh, uh, as, as, as it's being uh, executed. Um, right, uh, so we've talked so far about snapshotting uh, where the outputs uh, can, you know, can generate some code, uh, but snapshots uh, might also generate values. So here we're a little bit back to where we were before what, what, with what Rebecca was showing. Um, I mean, previously we could kind of look at uh, whether something is equal to something else and that, that's, that's great, but there may be cases in which we want to really have more, more detail about the return values of, of functions. Uh, in which case we can snapshot values. Um, imagine here we have some list, and as you can see in this example, uh, you know, a list with uh, with a few elements. Uh, you've got one, two, three, four, five. Uh, you've got there, so you've got a list that's composed of two sublists, one A, one B, uh, uh, and uh, you can see the contents here. Uh, so if, if you were snapshotting this list, then uh, conveniently this, this, uh, this list would be presented in this fashion. So again, in human readable format, where you can see that it's a list, uh, you know, one, uh, one element of the list is itself a named list whose elements are one, five, and 10, and a second, and also a second element uh, that's also a list contains elephant and banana. Uh, so this is really nice in the sense that you can capture values, uh, you can snapshot values and see those values in, 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 in greater, greater detail. And that might be useful for certain, certain cases. Uh, this also, as we'll see in a little bit more detail shortly, you can also kind of um, define how, uh, uh, have some influence over how the snapshot testing serializes values. Uh, so, you know, it's presenting it in kind of like a JSON-esque form here. You can exercise some control over over the the way in which it it, it serializes um, the elements of of the uh, the snapshotted value, uh, right? Interrupt with a question. Sure, go ahead. So this is big picture, but it hasn't sunk in for me. Why would you do this over expect equal and just spell out the list? I made more sense for the earlier examples, but this one I don't understand. 
Yeah, that's that's a good that's a good question. Um, I'm not sure that I can honestly offer like a, a super satisfactory answer, uh, to be very honest with you, but I can show maybe a use case that might kind of uh, by wave of hands, sorry, uh, might might uh, provide some motivation. Uh, so this is actually um, maybe a bit of an aside to kind of anchor <laughs> anchor all of what, what what we're talking about in something a little bit more concrete and real. So there's this relatively new package, I guess it's about a year old or so, uh, called Shiny Test 2, uh, and that, that whose purpose is basically to allow snapshot, to, to provide kind of a tool for snapshot testing and a Shiny application. So with a Shiny application, um, you know, there may be certain things that you want to test within the application. You want to kind of test its, let's say, internal state, uh, and then also kind of how it appears, right? Uh, because it's basically a web, a web app, a web page. Um, Can I and, and, uh, just interrupt for a second sure. before this? Just uh, the short answer to why to use the snapshot instead of a list is when it's complicated. Mm -hmm. um, like if it, it's hard to see or it's hard to generate that list sometimes if it's a you know complex structure that it's outputting, and then it's hard to see what the you know hard to update that, hard to make it clean which is what I think we're going to see in shiny test too, that when it's something really yeah. complex, you don't want to like hand generate it. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's a, that's a better answer. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I think like the generic, maybe a generic motivation for, for, for snapshotting is just when it's complicated, you know, that's the tool for complicated situations. I think is maybe like one, one, one way to put it in really compact form. Um, but with, with with shiny, you know, it, I guess for those who've, who've used shiny before, um, you know, with, with shiny, you have uh, in the application, you kind of have like how the application looks at a particular moment in time, and as well as like the underlying values, like the user inputted a certain value in a certain field, and then that updates an output that'll have a certain field. So you have all of these sets of sets of values that that, that exist in the shine in the shiny app to kind of test its current state. Uh, and that's that's snapshot testing. So this is kind of a case where you have this complex set of of, of, of values uh, that that are that are that are being captured with uh, with 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 shiny. Um, uh, I guess after the uh, the um, uh, the values part, the expect snapshot values. Also, I guess the part that I haven't gotten to, and maybe since up here I'll go ahead and explain, is within shiny test two. Um, my understanding is. Um, basically, you can run an application. You can basically uh, uh, instruct Shiny Test Two to take screenshots at certain points in the application, uh, which will basically be these PNG files. So basically, an image file that will be a snapshot that you'll compare. You know, uh, you'll kind of take as a baseline and compare it in future runs of code, because uh, indeed that's kind of the next one of the next things coming with uh, with uh, the Shiny. Uh, the, the shiny snap is that you know sometimes sometimes your your function generates a file. Um, some of those files may be easily you know kind of machine readable. So think of mm -hmm. a text a text file, an R script, uh, you know JSON, YAML, uh, things of that nature, kind of plain text files. But they may also be binary files uh, like a, a PNG file or something something else. Um, and so you you would want shiny you know, shiny offers you sorry not shiny rather test that offers you the ability to basically kind of capture um, to capture that output uh, as a, as a snapshot uh, of your function uh, and then um, in future runs of your tests to compare to compare that um, to compare kind of your your reference uh, let's say like your your reference snapshot against any newly generated snapshot. So let's say you have a you have a picture uh, that's a you know, PNG file that's generated. You, you can you can kind of look and see if uh, if things have 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 changed, right? If if the two files, uh, the kind of the 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 old file and the new file are 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 the same. Uh, and to that end, actually, Shiny uh, the snapshot testing uh, tools offer you this uh, little. Um, uh, snapshot review function, uh, which opens up a shiny application that will allow you to see kind of your old file and your new file and, and inspect changes. So it's kind of like a, a diff engine a little bit for certain certain file types that that this supports. Um, uh, 
and, and, and you can do the same here for you know, like a general text file. So this would be more of the general kind of a git diff that you might be familiar with, but it also supports, I believe, the PNG files in a, in a certain sense. And then within this UI, you can see, you can see that you have this, this, this accept button at the very top, which I presume just invokes in the background the, uh, the, the, that uh, uh, snapshot ex accept function that the test that has. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess that's all I wanted to say as kind of by way of an overview uh, on, 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 on that front, um, that, you know, you have these really sophisticated tools for, for, for snapshotting um, that, that allow you to kind of inspect um, what functions emit in terms of, you know, text that they output kind of um, uh, as well as any files that they produce. Um, both files that you know R can understand, as well as maybe files that it can't native well can't understand within the scope of like test test that, um, which which is really quite nice. So basically, I don't know if this is a correct terminology here, but I, in my mind, I would think of this as like you generate test fixtures in a certain sense. You like you run tests, it generates an artifact of the test, um, uh, so that generates like let's say an out an output of, of the function call, uh, and then you can compare uh, that that fixture that 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 snapshot against future snapshots to see if you know if you've modified your code has that modification of the code led to um changes in in, in what it outputs uh in terms of in terms of files and that first uh, kind of like a broad set of files um whether those files be you know text text files or or or, or images um i thought that was pretty neat and again for for me kind of this it really my mind immediately went to this uh, shiny test too, where that I kind of saw like one case in which this was this idea was being brought to brought to bear on uh, you know kind of a, a a problem I guess for shiny developers is you know having tools to test like what what is what is your application's internal state at various points in time like all of these um, you, know, uh, you know output output fields input fields. Uh, et, et cetera, you know, what does your app look like? Uh, how, what's its internal state? And then also what does it look like? You know, is your, is your HTML code generating, uh, you know, the, 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 the blue banner with uh, the light blue uh, uh, drop shadow that you, you, you thought it would or, or, or not? Um, and I thought that was really kind of neat. But this, this same idea could be extended, uh, I guess, to, to other things as well. Uh, I don't know, have others used this? Uh, and if so, do you have other kind of examples of uh, snapshot testing? Um, a lot of times lately, I like start with snapshot testing and then like if there's anything in it that is um, of particular interest, I'll back off and like test those things directly. But it's it's like the the easy way to tell if anything has changed because, you know, it's recording exactly what the output is um it's it feels sloppy <laughs> to do that but it's a way to get to like capture things um you know this is the known value and now i'm going to make some changes and then maybe after i make the changes i'll, I'll make it a little bit more um robust although uh thanks to this and actually looking at all the arguments in the snapshots some of the things I do to make it more robust are built into the snapshot testing if you want to, um, which I'm sure we'll go into. Uh, sure. So I don't, um, I can't think of a specific example where snapshots are the best way, but I do think they're super, like if you have a package that has no tests, just doing a snapshot of each function and some basic calls like, do snapshots of your examples or whatever uh, that can get you to really good test coverage right away. Even, you know, even if it isn't perfect, although like um, one of the things that can be a problem is if, if it matters that the function is outputting integers instead of uh, doubles, for example. And now I see that is a thing that you can, if you do the um, JSON two version of snapshot output, or basically anything other than the default, it records the difference between integers and doubles. So, yeah. Um, 
The I, I also, oh, oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Just, just uh, the transform argument on expect snapshot uh, was really interesting to see that it'll uh, scrub out or it, it lets you set something up to scrub out. Um, and I guess wait until we're going into those exact files. But no, 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 that, that one got cool. me really excited too. John. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, and, and it actually makes me want to look at uh, some of the source code for a few a few packages that I'm using for um, uh, like H HTTP to testing. Um, uh, yeah, um, so I guess we'll go into the snapshot. I'll just kind of read the read the docs, I suppose, for these <laughs> individual functions and, and and go through them in maybe a little bit more detail. Um, so. Uh, yeah, basically here you've got this function expect snapshot. So here, here you're 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 not expecting. It's kind of akin to a unit test, except you know here here you're kind of looking looking not at the output of the the, the like the return value of the function so much as like a, a file a file that, that the function or some invocation of the function generates. And so you're comparing, you know, the your 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 past state versus your current state to see if anything has 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 changed. Um, and you've you've got you know uh, here like the code to generate. Um, I thought this was interesting too, and, and probably something I should think about uh, utilizing if ever I, I decide to, uh, to 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 publish anything to Cram. To date, I haven't um, <laughs> out of lazy, laziness principally. Um, is is a uh, you know do you want this 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 uh, snapshot to be run on Cran or not? And here you know I thought this was kind of an interesting remark is you know by default they're not because snapshots can often be very fragile. You know but perhaps a snapshot is dependent on your your computational environment and uh, it may not be the same computational environment as as on Cran um, uh, or you know a variety of reasons. Maybe the snapshot is very costly to produce and you don't want you know, Cran to have to bear that cost or some, something something along those lines. Uh, so I thought it was neat that there's a little kind of escape hatch uh, of sorts where you can say, like, don't don't run this on Cran. Um, the other thing that I thought was really quite nice, and we saw this earlier, is that you, you have this error option where you can say, you know, like, I know my code is going to, to, to throw an error. That's, that's kind of the whole point. Um, and, and I just, uh, you know, the purpose of the snapshot is so that I can see as a human, whether the error message is sensible, useful, et cetera, so that I can see if you know if, if things error in ways that I ex where I expect them to error, that the error messages are somehow informative to, to the users. I, I guess you could test this via other means, but snapshots, I guess, have the have the virtue that they record all the code as well as all of the error message. And you don't have to write, let's say, a formal test or, or, or around that in the sense of, you know. Uh, parsing the string and making sure that some substring that's of interest is part of this, the, the error string, but instead you can just see the whole whole error message and make your own human call about whether that makes sense or not. Um, the the transform bit, um, I, I didn't go into, I didn't plunge very far into this, but I thought this is really, this is really neat is that you can, uh, what's nice is, but this is, you know, as you're generating your snapshot, you can sort of, um, um, uh, they, they see here is like scrub, scrub, basically take out any sensitive information that may be in the file that you're you're generating. Um, and this this example may or may not make sense to uh, to other people, but definitely it resonated with me. Is uh, you know for some packages that I, I've developed, I, I'm um, I'm making web requests with credentials that I don't want to share with the world, so secrets. Um, and so I don't want my I don't want the, my my kind of snapshots or, or kind of like test fixtures to contain sense of information which would allow someone to infiltrate my server or whatever whatever else. Uh, and so it's really quite nice that this is this is done. I, I I haven't seen how this can be. I haven't tinkered with this in test that directly, but I know kind of the spiritual equivalent of this is available with. Um, there's this book, uh, HTTP testing with with R that offers a few a few packages that that that, that allow you, among other things, to do this. So like the idea is basically you make a web request, you make like a web request, the server says something back to you, it's your your local uh, client, uh, and then you can record that response and see if that response makes sense. Uh, uh, and so um, uh, with with one that I use, which is VCR. 
um, uh, basically you can you can you can do exactly what test that is doing. You just say, you know, I have a list of sensitive information that's going to be in my request because I need to send authentication to the server. Uh, for, for me to do something, uh, and then I can scrub it out. Uh, so just kind of an example from one thing that I'm doing is, uh, you know, I've, I've uh, previously, I guess, uh, taken out some credentials and, you know, put in where the server name is, fake server, where workspaces, work, fake workspace, et cetera. Not, not very inventive, I know. Um, <laughs> but uh, what it, it has the effect of, you know, for, for this uh, a kind of snapshot uh, in the case of VCR, it's a YAML file, or I guess you could also do JSON. Is uh, you know for for these these parts of the request that you know everything's recorded, but the sensitive bits are scrubbed so that I can post this on GitHub and not worry about other people doing uh, untoward things with with my server or my credentials. Uh, anyway, I thought that was neat, John. I don't know if you've had any use with with the transform or have ideas about how to use it, but I, I thought it was uh, it, it was quite neat. So. Uh, really like it's similar and I, I want to, I don't know if I'll use it directly because, um, it's possible that the HTTP test or VCR, et cetera, can do it directly. Um, there are APIs that I'm hitting where, you know, the result will have a date or a timestamp in it. And obviously, well, depending on what I'm doing that probably won't be the same each time. And so uh, I don't want that in the test. I, I want everything else that comes back to be the same, but that piece I don't. And so I could see adding a step that um, detects that, you know, any anything that looks like this, uh, change that to just the word timestamp or something like that. Um, well, that's a good use case. I hadn't thought about that. That makes, that makes perfect sense. Uh, so far though, it, so it's saying it takes, um, Okay, it takes the whole vector of lines because like a lot of times it'll be the next line is the one I want to remove. Like, you know, this line will say TS or timestamp or whatever. And so the line after that, I want to um, scrub. Uh, so I need to play with this and see how it works to make sure. Yeah. It, at first I was thinking it was going to feed each line into the function, but if it's feeding all the lines into the function, then it should be okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the that's the one that I thought of immediately because I'm like literally working on it right now. <laughs> um, uh, but I like, you know, a lot of the cases I can think of, I would be using something like VCR or HTTP test. Um, yeah. And so I would I hope they do more like they do do more of that. Um, but it feels like something I will hit like. There have been cases like, you know, like I said, I, I usually or often will start with snapshots and then kind of back off from snapshots. And the more I read the docs, I'm like, hmm, it might be just refine your snapshots. But what I like about them is that they do record like everything. I've had cases where a test, a, a snapshot test fails and it's because some little thing changed, but I didn't realize that little thing was changing. I never would have tested for it line by line you know yeah um and, or, and or, or you have a test that would pass if you're not recording a snapshot but pass right. for maybe different reasons or fail for different reasons than than you expect yeah yeah so i i don't know like there is that the fine line like like they say by default they don't run snapshots on cran because they're fragile but like i feel like at some point you kind of i don't know like you should get to the point where you can embrace that. And if it changes, it's because of something that I care about, you know? Yeah. So clean out with transform, clean out anything that you don't care about. So maybe you could run, um, like I, I could, oh, I could totally see just running, uh, passing uh, stringer, uh, string squish in as the transform that uh, removes any white space at the beginning and end and any double spaces in the middle of the string. There could be cases where you just don't care about that at all. And so just get rid of all that. But otherwise, I want the output to be identical. Um, yep. And that would probably take care of a, a lot of cases where things are fragile, actually. Um, so yeah, I, I like snapshots. They were added. I mean, it's probably a Edition couple three, of years right? ago. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a while ago now, but it feels recent. Um, 
I'm still just getting the hang of using them. And it is funny to me because they feel both more powerful and more sloppy. Like I can use them in two opposite cases. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, to, to the power side of things, I mean, one thing, I, I, to, to be clear, I've never used this or found a case where I wanted to use it, but it sounds like a neat idea is with the, the there's this option variant, uh, which uh, as I understand it, allows you to kind of anticipate a, a, a variant case um, where, where basically you, you could generate a snapshot in, you know, in condition one and condition two and in condition three uh, in a certain sense. If, uh, you know, if you anticipated these kind of use, use cases and, 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 and see if, if uh, you have any test problems in each one of these cases. So this might be useful perhaps for I, I, I can imagine might be useful for uh, you know, let's say professional package authors that that are are want to make sure that you know the update to ggplot works equally well on uh, you know Ubuntu's latest LTS and uh, uh, and Mac and and Windows etc. Et, et or, or or with maybe some different uh, environment variables or something something to that that effect. Um, I didn't probe very far into this, but that's. The general I just I, I I get of where 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 this might be useful. Yeah, I and think, as, and as they say for like CI systems, although there you have to yeah. kind of go into that and then <laughs> sift through the the volume of well, potentially large volume of of uh, of snapshots that you generate. Yeah, I think you would all. I I can't think of a case where you would want to put a um, static string in as the variant. I think you'd always want to use like an environment variable to set what the variant is. And then the idea is, okay, if I'm on the system, do this, or if I'm, you know, maybe on CI, it runs slightly differently than uh, not on CI. Actually, I have a case that this would totally work for where um, each individual user uses their own API key for testing. Um, but the, uh, you know, and therefore the test, the CI has its own API key and the test can be slightly different. Like um, it, it's Slack related stuff and you can only see your yeah. own IMs. And even if you, even if to, you're in an IM with someone else, the like naming of that is opposite basically because it's your IM with the other person and they have the, that same IM with you. Um, and so I could definitely see, like I wouldn't want to use the actual API key as the name of the variant, but I could imagine doing some sort of hash on that or something um, to set the variant uh, or, or, you know, names or something so that it yep. saves it differently. Um, the other thing I, I would kind of like to yeah. maybe look at, I guess, when we come to it is like, what's the interaction between variant and, and wither or with, with R? Uh, I, I don't know if, if the things work hand in hand or if, um, if, if in a sense, like with R might sol solve the same problem in a different fashion. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not I'm not expert at all with wither with R, with with R, however it's pronounced. Uh, but yeah, uh, I I th I think they're different cases. Okay, with R is more about like um, well the the way I have used it is for kind of cleaning up after yourself. Yeah. Um, and and so you could still have multiple variants. Um, I see. I see. Yeah. That. So yeah. yeah. Um, and then I guess this last bit right here is the condition classes, whether to include these these the classes of of uh, the, the states, uh, um, the conditions um, in it or not. Um, yeah, and I think this is basically just the, more in the workflow. Um, coming back to snapshot testing, I oh, yeah, snapshot values uh, we saw before, and this is where you're you're making a comment, John. I I haven't dealt with this much, so maybe you you can you can add a lot of value here. Um, it is is with this stylus basically like how do you serialize the objects? And so there's a there's a there are a few options that are available to to you. Um, you know, with just regular I guess JSON using the uh, certain aspects of the JSON light package. This JSON two, um, I'm. It sounds like you have more understanding on this deep 
parse, uh, and then the serialize, which I guess is a serializing function. But anyway, I'll stop there because it sounds like you you have a lot more knowledge in this domain. Only like very recent, uh, I dug into it to see, and I, I did just see looking at this documentation. I think I have to put submit a pull request because it drives me crazy that um, the JSON and JSON2 functions are in opposite orders. Serialized JSON is equivalent to to JSON, and unserialized mm -hmm. JSON is equivalent to from JSON. Um, uh, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. and so, anyway, but um, so I ran. Uh, you know, I didn't know about the serialized JSON function even. Um, it is kind of like, you know, the output that you saw where it created JSON object of the list, except in addition to the values, it includes explicitly, you know, double okay. integer, okay. whatever. Um, I can't remember if there was anything else, but that's the general idea is that it uh, just includes all of that info so that it, um, you know, is clear. Like, I think if you have null values, it can be more invisible with just uh, to JSON and from JSON versus serialized JSON would probably capture those. But then if you have anything that, that doesn't capture, dparse um, is like the R representation of the thing. It's like, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure actually what the difference is between dparse and dput. Um, yeah. I don't know, sure. but dparse uh, does that same thing where if you give it, uh, um, no, that's going to be a mess. Let's do, um, it, it's, it like returns a character vector that is the thing that you gave it. So let okay. me throw this into chat, like, um, versus, Yeah, that's kind of the same thing that dput also gives you the code. I guess it doesn't give it to you as a character vector. It just gives it to you as output. Um, Got it. So yeah, there, it's the same idea. Yeah, it, it's just that. Say like the, oh, <laughs> well, just that it's the, it's, I guess, let me do a, an example that um, has more in it. And let's see if we, I'm just going to grab the top of this because it's going to make a mess. But if you do something like empty cars, like, it is the whole thing. Like it's, okay. it gives you all the info about what it is. And so you can copy and paste that and uh, oh, I see. I see. regenerate the thing, whatever the thing okay. is. Um, and so that one, uh, you know, that's pretty exact. And then serializes, like literally it just saves an object that is the R. Okay. It's like, it's like save RDS. Um, I think it's, it's strongly related to save RDS. Um, and so similar to uh, like, this is the, the worst for readability because it's a binary object. You can't read it. GitHub can't compare the changes, things like that. Um, and, and that's kind of, yeah, if you go down that list, um, you have more readability. Like JSON, the top, the default JSON value is super easy to read, but it might miss some slight differences. JSON 2, it's a little bit harder to read, but still fairly clean, especially comparing uh, versions. You're going to be able to see the difference really quickly. Dparse, you might, you know, like if you look at something like MT cars, it gets messy. And so it might be hard to see what the difference is. And then serialize, you can't see the difference at all. Um, so, but I could totally like, Again, that would be examples where I've said, oh no, I can't quite use snapshot testing because I need these finer grain details in the snapshot. Well, you know, they've got you covered. <laughs> yeah. All the way down. Because if you serialize, like that's going to be exactly the same object. Um, got it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. And I guess, you know, we've got the CRAN flag, uh, the tolerance, um, which is kind of akin to what we saw a little bit with the all, all equal. Um, we saw the variance, uh, so variance exist uh, again for 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 the uh, the values just as the same way, uh, same way in which is the same way in which the same way that they <laughs> did for um, the, uh, the 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 kind of snapshot where, where you're having a file, um, 
uh, speaking of files, um, so here, here you have kind of a set of set of functions that allow you um, to uh, kind of signal, well, generate a generate a file, um, uh, or have your function gener generate a file uh, that'll serve as your snap snapshot, uh, um, um, uh, as well as uh, this one function, which which is kind of, uh, as I understand, like a cleanup function, uh, announce snapshot, that you basically say, you know. This test is going to create a file. Um, normally, you know, maybe files are going to get cleaned up at the end of my my tests. Uh, uh, just, uh, but keep this file on hand, even if this test does not, for whatever reason, get run. Uh, so I think, for example, we'll come to this later. Is about skipping tests. I think um, uh, even if this test is skipped, the output will will be from like a prior run will be saved. It won't be it won't be uh, swept. Uh, won't be deleted or swept away. That's at least my understanding of. Of the thing, uh, and then you have these compare functions for comparing the text files and comparing the, the binary files. Uh, so for, for arguments, you basically have, a, have to have a path uh, where where the file will will be. Um, again, you got the cran flag, um, uh, the transform function. Again, for scrubbing sensitive data, um, so you kind of ingest the thing as a character vector, scrub sensitive data. Variants, uh, which we saw before, um, and then I guess the paths uh, to the old and new files. Um, maybe to be a little conscious of time, I might kind of power <laughs> through some of this stuff. Uh, sorry, geek geeked out on a lot of the, the snapshot yeah. testing. <laughs> um, and then, and this is uh, the two functions which which kind of allow you to sort of. Uh, uh, man manage this the, the snapshot so basically to kind of re review review them and, and accept them um so uh the accept or sorry the review opens as we saw earlier in the, in the vignette opens a shiny uh shiny app that that allows you to kind of review the snapshots and see what what's what's changed at least for the file types that it supports uh and then um accept uh if you want to accept a, a, a the updated snapshot so if let's say Things have changed, and they've changed for the better. Um, uh, uh, in terms of your, your your file, you can accept this new file as as uh, or this new snapshot as the new and improved snapshot against which to compare all future runs of, of that same test. Um, yeah, and that's it for for snapshot testing. Um, luckily, I think the side effects were fairly trivial. I think um, uh, in the sense that um, here. You know, you're, you're looking for um, kind of on this first block is, and I've used this quite a bit. Uh, it, it is you know, if you like, let's imagine a case where you set up your your, your code. Uh, you, you know that you know that your function should issue an error, a warning, or so on and so forth, depending on certain inputs or cases, and you want to check whether indeed it does. That's what these functions are are, are there for. So you know, expecting the error. So if an error, if it raises an error, it, it won't. Be a problem. Instead, your funk, your, your your test will expect that it's looking for an error, uh, listening for an error, and if it finds an error, your test your test passes, right? Because that's what you're expecting. So it's kind of like a little bit like the uh, uh, expect like true or false. You're expecting uh, an error, um, uh, expecting a warning, and expecting a message, or or expecting uh, this is the more general. I, I think I didn't look into this very much, but expecting some other like um, uh, custom condition. Um, uh, so uh, that you you've kind of created uh, in in your function. Um, uh, I, think I principally use this sort of like just to see if it throws an error, and then I guess to see if the string uh, conforms with like the, the error message conforms with what I've done. But mostly out of laziness, just does it issue an error or a warning or something of that effect, something to that effect. One of the main things I've done. Uh, is if I have like a whole series of tests where I like generate an object and then, um, you know, maybe I need to clear out some um, stochastic pieces, you know, which is, you know, now I'm looking at, maybe I don't have to do that. I could just do that in the snapshot, but I will do an expect uh, error here. I'm going to paste one in of NA, which if you give NA as the uh, regex argument, it's saying, I don't expect an error. So if I get an error, this test should fail. Mm -hmm. and a lot of times I'll put that in just as, okay, this part, I'm just going to run the function 
And if I get an error, okay, stop, you know, that should fail the test. If I don't get the error, then I'll do something after that with this object that I created. So that's that test conversations gets blah, blah, blah. So I, I create that object and then I do look at details about that object afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Instead of just, you know, I could just put the um, creation outside of expect error, but it gives me a little, you know, um, if that fails, I want to be explicitly told it failed this check, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's the main way that I've used these. And then, uh, you know, in theory, expect message, et cetera. But the reason I put these together is now with snapshots, you don't necessarily need these. Just like if you do an expect snapshot, especially, um, you know, with error true or with without it, and you're looking at messaging or whatever, you get the exact message, not just, you know, your rough test or you don't put anything in at all to tell it what it is. And so it's, it tells you if that changed, which usually means something weird happened. So, yeah. Yeah. And I guess also you have, uh, for, for, for the side effects, you have the complement to this, uh, which, which is, yeah. you know, oh, th yeah. there's no error, no warning, no message, no condition. So that's hopefully pretty, pretty yeah. self-explanatory. Um, uh, then these these I've not used actually, but uh, to basically see whether whether there's something that's returned visibly or invisibly um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, from from your function. I'm thinking I might actually want to start doing this. Uh, maybe um, mm -hmm. yeah, to see basically how they're returning data, whether it's visibly or invisibly, um, and. Or rather, this is one thing I was thinking about doing. So, uh, expecting output to see if you know your function prints something to the console, um, uh, you can you can test you can test for that. Um, yeah, and here even it says for very simple output <laughs> complex cases, ex go to snapshots yep. uh, because you'll get everything. Um, yeah, <laughs> and. Uh, Let's see. This uh, expect silent as a codex. Uh, actually, these these are these are two that I, I didn't fully. Or these these two blocks right here, I think ones where I didn't fully um, understand what was going on here. Um, okay, I see. So there's no. Okay, got it. No message. Uh, it, it is it is your function silent? Uh, so right. uh, it, it's sort of like uh, expect. Expect it, you know, no, no output, no messages, no warnings. Doesn't mention errors here, um, actually. That's so the case that I was just, uh, it doesn't mention errors. That's a good point. Cause the case I was just talking about, I think expect silent is probably a better plate, better way to do that of, um, well, I guess it would have output. So I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to play with that, that. You know, if I'm just running something and it shouldn't shouldn't make any noise at all, this would be a wrapper to use there to just yeah. kind of make sure that it worked. Um, yeah. Um, oh yeah. So this is this is um, the one where I, I got a little puzzled, and I don't know if there are three minutes we're going to get me unpuzzled, but. Uh, um, it, is 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 basically it, my understanding of this is that um, if you, if you're if you're running a test and you want to have certain um, certain conditions set uh, kind of like for a specific test, this is the way in which you can do so. Uh, so I think with with R, you're setting it at least from my use cases, you're setting kind of globally for your test session. And here it looks like maybe you, you're setting it um specifically for the test um i don't know maybe, maybe i'm wrong on this um <laughs> also this is this local reproducible output is maybe a kind of a maybe more narrow case like let's suppose your function produces some output uh maybe with cli or with other things um with with that you know cli is going to uh, for example uh, or, or maybe some of your text will produce uh, unicode uh text right. Um, if you're on Linux or Mac, no problem. If you're on Windows, problem, uh, potentially. Uh, and so you might want to uh, sort of uh, uh, avoid avoid those cases. So it has this nice example at the very bottom uh, that, that 
actually now that I'm remembering it, it kind of talks talks about this is, you know, let's say for the context of this code is like uh, you're using CLI, which is great. I guess we'll remember from kind of from views that uh, it was presenting, it, it has some nice things that are present, uh, printed to the console, a lot of which relies on Unicode. Um, if I'm not mistaken, some of it ASCII, anyway, I'm not sure. Um, uh, so here you're, you're, you're going to have a CLI like color, color typically be the color blue. Uh, and typically this would have a, an ellipsis symbol, which is in a Unicode value. Um, and for the, this context, what you're doing by, I guess, virtue of the defaults here, uh, which are um, making CLI not Unicode, uh, making crayon not color things, you're taking that out of the equation so that you can run the test and the test will will pass even if those things aren't available, I guess, in the context and well, on the machine in which you're, the environment in which you're running the test. That's kind of broadly what I'm I'm getting from, from, from this. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. But yeah, uh, these are just, you know, it's funny because they aren't really expectations. Like they, they got thrown into the expectations block, but um, it's because they didn't belong anywhere else. And they're just a, a special cases that I, I am sure, like the local test context, um, I like it feels dangerous to run. Like it's, it's already running inside of your, you know, like test that is running it. So if you run it, you're going to maybe make things weird. Um, but the local reproducible output, I guarantee that exists because of Crayon and CLI and they were writing functions, you know, they were writing tests and like, ah, keep having to do this. Let's just, let's just make it, <laughs> um, you know, so, let's so, give it. So in a sense, things. John, like, uh, is it, do these just kind of, Target like a narrow the narrow cases of like CLI and uh, and and crayon the, the, the these things it's not it's not broader. Um, well, so I mean, the, those are definitely the examples they use, and those are the the options that they, they talk about. But I don't know if you're able to touch like a broader set of things. I think so. With the R Studio option, I think that helps. Um, uh, you know, it's but it's it, it's really it's a wrapper around. Um, with their uh, like with option or local option, yeah. um, and that's basically what it's doing. Um, so, I, you know, you can set up the language uh, easily. You can do th you know certain things easily, but it's it's basically a wrapper. I'll bet it's directly a wrapper around um, with their functions. Yeah. So it's just uh, it is just wrapping some some a, a with our call okay. inside a bunch of wrap with our calls, but got it, got it. Um, but I you know I'm I'm sure they wrote it this one wrapper function because they had to call those a lot, and so they're like, okay, let's make a thing. Um, yeah. I think, and you know, I, I do have it on our list uh, as. Uh, we're going to do a little look at with R in a few weeks, and then we might want to do the full dive into the package. Although it is kind of, I don't know, it's it is really straightforward as far once you okay. when, you know once you have the core set of functions that the na other named functions are just set and unset some other thing. Um, anyway, so but I think that's what that is. Like this is a little uh, internal uh, block of with R things that they use. Um, Anyway, so yeah, cool. Uh, and with that, we are out of time. So I will, uh, I guess we have um, one more, or uh, uh, yeah, we have a sign up for next week. I'm running next week. Um, so yeah, <laughs> uh, I will see everyone on Slack. Thank you for this, Arthur and John. Yeah, that was great. Thanks, Thank thanks for bearing with me. Uh, no, it's it something I barely yeah. understood. <laughs> that was really nice helpful. Ones to take. <laughs> thanks. So, bye, all. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.